This is the simplest, most analog precursor to radar. And it worked almost just as well. I'm in a pretty wild and crazy place right now. I'm on the island of Leros in Greece in the Dodecanese Islands. An island with millennia of history, like all the other islands around here, but one with a very specific and interesting military history dating from the 1910s until the end of the Second World War. Let's try and sum it up. These islands were Greek. The Greeks were fighting the Ottoman Empire. So were the Italians down in Libya. The Italians had more firepower, so they decided to help out the Greeks and themselves. So they occupied the Dodecanese, effectively stopping the Ottoman from using the sea, forcing them to go down and around through Egypt to get to Libya. Very successful strategic move. Then the Italians decided to stay. You can talk to Greeks about what they thought about that. Because the Italians had aspirations of empire as well. We are sticking around and we are going to fortify these islands, in particular this island of Leros. It has the largest deep water port in the eastern Mediterranean, incredibly mountainous terrain. Turkey is visible out in the distance, 10 kilometers or so from here. All around this island, there are the wildest military installations, viewpoints, so they could spot the enemy coming from a distance. It's incredible to consider how they built these installations back in the 1910s and the 1920s. Incredibly harsh terrain, getting all that gear up the mountains without any roads or helicopters at all. But enough about that. Let's talk about this. This incredibly cool architectural structure on the top of a mountain. Now, the British invented radar near the end of the Second World War. Absolute game changer. We know how that turned out. But before radar, the Italians built a bunch of these structures around the Mediterranean. This is the simplest, most analog precursor to radar. And it worked almost just as well. Let me try and explain. Right here on this mountaintop, there are three of these curved walls. They also kind of bend downwards towards the trenches that are in front of each of them. I'm standing in one right now. They cover all directions, 360 degrees. Back in the day, the walls were incredibly smooth and plaster, and there was no hole in the middle like there is here. One of the other ones is complete. In Italian, they called it Muro di Ascolto, the listening wall. The Greeks call it an aerophone. I think the fancy academic name for it is a parabolic, a parabolic, parabolic, what the hell is it? A parabolic amplified mirror. And all they had to do is have people walk up and down the trenches, listening to the wall. Because sound would travel from a very long distance, hit the wall, and bounce right down here into the trench, into the ears of the people who were listening. something man I can hear like a ship maybe an aircraft or something I don't know what it is but at one specific point I could hear something I turn around and there's a bush but it's out there in the distance it's incredibly effective to this day today soldiers were employed of course but I've read that in many cases blind people like locals from the islands would be employed because they have an incredibly sharp sense of hearing back in the day there were lines all along all of the walls indicating degrees, you know, out of 360. So they walk up and down like this, and they say, wait, there's a sound, there's a sound. Ah, 32 degrees. Boom. We have a sound of an airplane, 32 degrees, quite far out, but it's on its way in this direction. Now I'm down in the center of the installation. It's kind of this round circle, kind of a nice echoey sound. I'm trying to get out of the wind so you don't have to listen to, you know, blowing wind and the microphone sounds on my phone here. But I can see that there were stairs up to a structure above me here. Somewhere up there, it was probably made out of wood back in the day. And if one of the spotters, one of the listeners at the listening wall said, hey, we got an incoming at 32 degrees, the guys on the tower up there would probably scout with their binoculars, check it out, and radio it down to the headquarters just in the distance here, who would radio up the information to the huge artillery gun, and boom, they were ready for incoming aircraft. It is such a simple and beautiful architectural structure, incredibly symmetrical and graphic in its form, and it had a very important function 
for many, many years. Now, after the Italians changed sides in the Second World War, the Germans really wanted Leros. Like I said, incredibly strategic. But they simply couldn't conquer this island, and they couldn't figure out why. It was simply because of this installation. How did they know that we're coming? The listening wall, the aerophone. They finally found a way in. They decided to invade the island in the middle through some fjords where they were out of sight, out of mind. It could sneak in, ended up conquering the island. But it took them an incredibly long time. There was so much rich World War II military history on this island, if that's your thing. It's not really my thing, but I still find it interesting when I can combine it with architecture. So many wrecks and plane crashes in the ocean to dive at. So many of these wild installations that you can hike up to and have a look at and imagine what it was like back in the day. If you've read the book or seen the film, The Guns of Navarone, I think it takes place in, in literature uh, on the island of Rhodes, but it actually took place here. The Battle of Leros near the end of the war. I'm digging this. This is cool. How you guys doing? You good? All right. Good talk.